Hello, this is Mark from I Am Organic Gardening and welcome to part 12 of Back to Eden versus Fall Leaves. Here we are in the middle of December in zone 6B on a cold winter day. On our left hand side we have our cover crop of winter rye growing in our uh, residue of the fall leaves. There's very little leaves left. It pretty much has decomposed over the year. And on the right hand side we have our back to Eden garden with our raised mounds of our different types of cover crops growing in there to grow soil. I'm going to start this off by a very good note. Next year when I use my back to Eden garden it will work because I have all that beautiful soil growing now because I have the cover crops in there adding to the soil food web. So let's take a closer look at the green strips growing in the back to Eden garden of cover crops and how that's going to help grow soil. So I want to give you a better definition of growing soil. In front of us right now we have a solar panel that's about a foot wide, a little over a foot wide and about three feet long. Now what that does, as you know, is collecting the energy from the sun and converting it to electricity. Now what the grass is doing, or the cover crops and legumes is doing on the left hand side, is doing the same thing but not converting it to electricity. It's what it's doing is taking carbon out of the atmosphere through the power of sunshine and forcing it down into the ground, into the root systems and pushing it back in the ground. Carbon is the keystone for building soil. Organic matter is helpful, but it's not long term. It's just basically a uh, way nature has of uh, repairing itself quickly as a backup plant. Soil be covered all the time. If organic matter doesn't help grow soil, what does it really do? And the best way I can explain that is this. Here we have a bottle of suntan lotion and sunscreen. Now that's a, a number 30 for protection. So that's what exactly what, think of the soil as a skin of the planet or the skin on your arm. We're going to use suntan lotion to protect it from burning. We're going to use wood chips, cover crops, leaves, anything to cover soil, cardboard even, is going to be helpful to cover the soil. You should never have bare soil in your garden. So what this does, just like uh, anything else covering, it's going to keep your skin from burning, or it's also going to keep your uh, skin temperature low, because it's not going to heat up from the heat of the sun, and also it's not going to uh, take out a lot of moisture from your skin. So, so that's the same thing as your wood chips or any kind of mulch. It's going to help the soil to stay alive so things, so the soil food web, those things, can stay alive and working. So when I plant into this green area here, I'm only going to plant in the front part here. Now, when I disturb that or remove some of the green area in there to plant or to uh, reduce it by covering it up and killing it off, what it's just like is just almost like a scratch on your arm. Now what that does, your arm, once you hurt it or cover it, it can repair itself. And when we disturb too much of an area on our arm or a hand, we have to be concerned, just like in our soil. It's the same type of thing. The soil is the skin of the planet. It's a living part of this planet. So the best thing is, when we have something growing on the ground, we can uh, capture sunlight in two ways. As you can see, the panel is laying down. So when we have something growing along the surface of our planet, that that sunlight is captured in, the, let's say, the horizontal mode. So here you can see that we have the solar panel now go vertical. I'm showing you this because we don't always have to have something straight or flat on the ground. We can have all other taller plants to capture more sunlight in the upper part. Just like Paul does with all his trees in his orchard and other types of things that grow tall like the asparagus. Those types of things. So my example here is to use elephant garlic. That's what's in front of us right now. And it's not really garlic, it's a shallot, you know. But anyway, and you can see how tall it gets. It's about five feet for me, plus has a nice flowering head up on top. So in our first part of growing soil, we have our green part here, which is going to capture our sunlight, then transfer that energy into taking the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and pushing it down into the soil. 
thus growing our soil. So I'd like to share with you a very important source. And it's also on YouTube. So if you type in NASA carbon dioxide video, and this is by NASA, our space agency, if you click on there, it will go to the video here, which you see, NASA. And just click on that. Now, I cannot play that because I can't uh, play someone else's video and uh, tape record it. Now, by watching this video, you'll see the scope of all the carbon dioxide. That's the red in the atmosphere, and it gets worse. Don't be alarmed by it. It does clear up at the end of the year. But you'll see how much carbon dioxide, and I'll explain in the video what it's doing. But I just, again, I wanted to show you the scope of how much carbon dioxide is in our atmosphere. And the plants are taking it out and then pushing it back into the ground every year. And that's helping to grow soil. That's the significance of this video and what I'm trying to explain. So we're going to be taking more carbon through the plants and putting it in our soil than we can ever do by covering the soil with wood chips or leaves or cardboard or anything else too. The only way the soil is going to grow and to enhance and be better for this planet is to take carbon from the atmosphere and store it down below. All the other surface area, like I was talking about, like the suntan lotion, that's going to just do the top layer. But you have to get carbon all the way down here. And the only way to do that is through the root system, through the plant, through the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere using the sunlight. So let's go over the next part that's helping grow our soil, is the roots. What is the function of the roots in the soil? So some of the key points about the root systems are it's the vessel that's going to take the carbon, the liquid carbon, and force it back down into the ground, into the soil. And also, it's going to feed the soil by taking, again, the sunlight, making sugars and carbohydrates, and feeding the soil food web. So let's go over how different plants or different species have different types of root systems. So now we have our living roots in the soil, as much as we can do. Now here, it gives a good explanation. And a lot of people ask me, um, if I plant just ryegrass, how come it never, or it dies off in the summertime, or uh, there's problems with it? Uh, first of all, if you just have ryegrass and you're trying to grow soil, is it going to help? Yes, but there's a couple of things you should add to that knowledge of that helping you grow soil. One is that if on the left hand side, we'll start on the left and go to the right, you can see here that if you leave 50% of the top growth of ryegrass or any type of plant, you're going to get the roots, no roots stop growing. They're going to continue down. So I do not wish to cut my cover crop on the back of the row, it's always going to grow tall so I can get those roots to go uh, deeper into the ground. Now if you remove 70% of the top, which you can see here, and I'll get a better close up of it for you, if we remove 70% of that top, which is the middle number, see how much the root growth is reduced. 50% of the roots stop growing for 17 days. Now, and then if you go all the way to the right hand side, you see when you cut and you remove 90% of the top growth, that the roots stop growing for 17 days and they're shorter. And that's what happens when we have our uh, cover crop or grasses or anything else too, and we try to maintain them. We want them to grow as tall as possible. The more growth you have on top, the deeper the roots will go. Now here's another example we have, and I want to show you, is how well those roots grow. Now what you see here, and this is unbelievable, but this is what naturally the roots should do in your garden when you have good soil, and that's why you need to grow soil. Now on the left hand side, we have our just our regular grass pastures, and that's always being eaten, but hopefully you have better crop management in your pastures and you let the pasture grasses grow up tall. Now you have potatoes. Now potato roots can grow anywhere from two feet to four feet long. And that is just amazing to me because I've never seen it happen for me, but it does happen. Now again, beans anywhere from two and a half to four feet, small grains that I grow. Your winter rye can grow three feet to five feet. The point is you do not wish to cut the tops of the plants off because if you do, you will not get that root growth down below. Now you can see the corn stalk uh, more towards your right hand side and now that will go down uh, four to five feet. 
and that also is that's why I grow a lot of sunflowers on my property too. Uh, corn is great, but also sunflowers I can use the seeds from, which also I can sell now and also is going to grow soil for me. But those roots can get down anywhere from four to five feet. And the last one on the right hand side over here is alfalfa. Now I grow that on certain parts of my farm and I also have that inside my grass strips in the back of the garden. That can get anywhere from four to eight feet. Now this takes time to do things over a while. You're not going to just plant alfalfa and have the first year it's going to go down four to five feet. It's going to slowly work down into the soil. Alfalfa is a perennial, so those roots will always be there. Now, the best time of the year for that soil to loosen up is in now in the cooler months. Again, our soil is alive, and now it has moisture back in it over the winter months, and those roots can start growing slowly once it comes springtime because that soil or clay, that compact compact clay is softer then and those roots can expand every year so eventually they can get down to four to eight feet. So now we have a good understanding about the length of the roots. Now this is a weed, this is called pokeweed, P-O-K-E, and you can see how large the root gets but also the size of it. These are oats or grains and they have very fine roots and this is our tomato plant which has a medium sized root but goes in all different directions. Now the purpose of this is to open the soil up as much as possible to get those roots down deeper. Now I'm trying to point this out for the simple fact is, is that if you have just annual ryegrass or your lawn and how come it doesn't build soil over the years because you're only sending one type of root down into the ground. Nowhere in nature is there just one type of species of plant that sends a certain root down. Now, when you have multiple groups of plants or multiple groups of species of plants, you're going to get different root systems in different sizes, length and thickness. So you'll be getting more sunlight going down, but you'll also be getting more air and more water into the soil. And also remember, with all those roots in the soil, you are also feeding the soil, those carbohydrates and sugars. So in my Back to Eden garden, I planted multiple species. I planted at least five different things. And I also planted later on another two or three more, so I had different size roots and different heights and everything in a permanent root system that stays there that will grow the soil. And one thing also too is that never worry about having too many roots in the ground. There's enough room for everything. Some will go deep, some will go across, some will go sideways. It doesn't matter. You can plant as much as you want into the soil. It's not going to steal nutrients from something else. If anything, these all help each other. They're there to help each other. They're not there to hurt each other. So I want to show you this. A lot of people are concerned about uh, crowding with all the roots in the ground and not being supplied with enough water or minerals or nutrients. But you can see here, and I know this is a bad example because it doesn't use the mycorrhizal fungi, is this kale plant. But see how it's doing very nicely crowded in with all the other growing roots. It's still surviving. This is what nature does all the time. It doesn't have to be one single plant every two or three feet or all this spacing. That's just made for convenience for us to use in the garden. So the next thing that we do not see at any time, unless we had a microscope and was looking for it, is in a root system we have to have a living root in the ground. We can't pull this out. We have to have a living root, a perennial root, or a tree root, something like that, that's endomycorrhizal, and that mycorrhizal fungi is going to live in our soil. And what that's going to do, it's going to reach down further and open up the soil so these roots, all these roots, can go through that hard pan or through that clay and reach deeper and deeper every year. Because the mycorrhizal fungi is so small that it will open up all the soil particles into aggregates and make them stay there in place with glomalin. So just choose a couple items from the list of endomycorrhizal fungi that's going to help you grow your soil.
Now, picking five things is just a limitation that I'm just putting on it, but you can do more. I wouldn't do any less, but try to get a uh, perennial root in there, uh, a legume, and something that flowers to attract bees, and those type of things, and just work along. There's something that goes along the ground and things that are growing tall in that area for you. So what the Back to Eden Garden means to me is, the best way I can say is life. Everything is living. Everything is sharing. Everything is recycling. Everything's being born again. Everything uh, helps each other. And that's what Back to Eden Gardening is to me. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I thank you very much for watching and taking time out of your day to do so. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Thanks.